Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about uh, Neisseria gonorrhea. Neisseria gonorrhea is also known as uh, gonococcus or uh, gonococci. It is a gram-negative bacteria, which is uh, diplococci, and it was first isolated by Neisser in the year 1817. The Neisseria gonorrhea belongs to the kingdom bacteria Phylum Proteobacteriaceae class. Beta proteobacteria, order Neisseriales, family Neisseriaceae, genus Neisseria, and species Gonorrhea. Neisseria Gonorrhea is responsible for the sexually transmitted disease Gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is also known as a clap. It is a sexually transmitted infection caused by the bacterium, and the infection may involve the genital organs of both male and female mouth and also in the rectum. So this organism resembles uh, Neisseria meningitis very closely in many properties. So the infection of Neisseria gonorrhea may present with a broad range of symptoms and it can affect the urogenital, anorectal, even the pharyngeal and conjunctival areas. So severe cases can lead to disseminated gonococcal infections. Sometimes uh, endocarditis may also occur and uh, it may also sometimes cause meningitis. In case of women, it mainly causes the uh, PID, that is the pelvic inflammatory disease. The gonococci is a gram-negative cocci. It is uh, oval or spherical in shape and it is usually found within the polymorphs and uh, it is arranged in pairs. So sometimes they are said to be diplococci. They are kidney shaped and they possess uh, pili on their surface. The next thing is the cultural characteristics. These organisms are uh, fastidious organisms so that they cannot move on ordinary cultured media. They require some special media for their growth. They are aerobic, but sometimes it may also grow anaerobically. The optimum temperature for the growth of this organism is about 35 to 36 degrees Celsius, whereas the optimum pH is about 7.2 to 7.6. It is essential to provide a 5 to 10 percent carbon dioxide for the growth of this organ. The non selective media which is used for culturing the Neisseria gonorrhea are chocolate agar, Fuller Hinton agar, and the modified New York City medium. Apart from this, the selective media, Thayer Martin medium with the antibiotics vancomycin, colistin, and nistatin are usually used to culture this Neisseria gonorrhea. In that selective media, the colonies are small, round, translucent, convex or slightly ammonate and its surface is uh, granular and it has a low weight margin. The biochemical characteristics of Neisseria gonorrhea, which it shows uh, only positive to catalase and oxidase and uh, all other tests were found to be negative like the gram staining it is negative, H2S production it is negative. Again, it doesn't uh, reduce the nitrate to nitrite and uh, it doesn't produce any pigments. In case of uh, sugar fermentation, it ferments only glucose and it doesn't ferment uh, other sugars. It doesn't produce any uh, DNA enzyme and it is also negative to tributin. The next important thing is the virulence factors of this uh, Neisseria gonorrhea. The first important virulence factor is pili. It is a hair like projection. It helps the organism to adhere into the host cell. And the next thing is the lipo oligosaccharide. It is endotoxic in nature. And the next important virulence factors are the outer membrane proteins. Here, the outer membrane proteins of gonorrhea are of three types. So, protein 1, POR protein, and protein 2, OPA protein, and protein 3, RMP protein. So, the protein 1 is a porin and it helps in adherence of the bacteria to the host cell. Like that the protein 2 also helps in adherence and protein 3 is associated with protein 1. And the next important virulence factor that is the IgA1 protease. It splits and inactivates the IgA antibodies in the host cell and their self facilitate the infection. So the next thing is the pathogenicity of uh, Neisseria gonorrhea. The source of infection is mainly uh, two things. One is by the asymptomatic carriers and another one by the patients. 
So there are uh, two important mode of infection of this uh, Neisseria gonadea towards uh, gonadea disease. So the first thing is the venereal infection that is uh, mainly through sexual contact. The next one is non-venereal infection. So this one shows the mechanism of uh, pathogenesis of Neisseria gonadea. Initially, monococci adhere to the epithelial cells of urethra or other mucosal surface through the hair-like projections, namely pili. And then it penetrates through the intercellular space and finally it reaches the sub-epithelial connective tissue and causes slight inflammation and after that it leads to severe clinical manifestations. So the incubation period for this Neisseria gonadea is about uh, 2 to 8 days. In case of uh, men, the disease starts with an acute urethritis with a mucopurulent discharge and then it leads to the prostate, seminal vesicles and epididymis. In some cases, it may become a chronic urethritis leading to stricture formation and after that the infection may spread through the periurethral tissues causing abscesses and multiple discharging sinuses. That is said to be water can perineum. In case of women, the initial infection starts with the urethritis and cervicitis that is the inflammation of urethra and the cervical area. Whereas uh, vaginitis doesn't occur in adult female, but the vulvovaginitis can occur in pre pubertal girls. And after that, the infection may extend to Bartholin glands and then to endometrium and finally to the fallopian tubes. It leads to pelvic inflammatory disease, that is the PIE. And rarely, peritonitis may develop with a perihepatic inflammation. So that is said to be fits a Curtis syndrome. In both the cases, uh, I mean in both the sexes, the infection of Neisseria gonadea leads to proctitis, then inflammation of the pharyngeal cavity, that is the pharyngitis, conjunctiva, conjunctivitis, bacteremia, and it finally leads to metastatic infections such as arthritis, endocarditis, meningitis, pyemia, and skin rashes. In the case of neonates, it causes ophthalmia neonatorum. It is a non venereal conococcal conjunctivitis in the newborn babies, and this one results from the direct infection during the birth of the child uh, through the birth canal. And with this, uh, I think you have got an idea about uh, morphology, biochemical characteristics and pathogenicity of Neisseria gonaria. And I will meet you in the next presentation with a laboratory diagnosis and treatment of Neisseria gonaria. Thank you.